So th here we, let's wrap up BDD here. And there's, you know, BDD seems like a pretty simple set of ideas, common sense once you explain them. We'll have to see if you follow them. But there's a lot of pitfalls here. Uh, the first one is, uh, because we're talking about this as the user interfaces as well as uh, how you develop the code. And, you know, you've started meeting with customers and the reason, that they're not, when you see a three by five card show it to the customer, they don't think it's been implemented, right? It's a little piece of paper. If you do a, a mock-up of your user interface with, you know, just, you know, it was easier for you to use Haml to make up a, a screen image and flash it up there, the customers are liable to think that, that you've already built it and be kind of reticent reticent to, uh, to make changes to it. That is, until late in the project when they say, no, I don't like the user interface and make you start over. Said, Why didn't you tell me that earlier? Well, they were a little intimidated by the code. So stick to that uh, paper and pencil crayon based uh, mock-up so they won't be afraid to uh, change it. A related thing is do just doing the sketches but not doing the storyboards. Uh, the user interface involves the interaction of all these pages and you want the customer to agree that how these are related together before you spend the time building the thing. So again, storyboards. And if you actually, if you go to YouTube and you look up uh, user stories, somebody even took the time to make a little stop action movie with it and set it alone, which you could do as well. That, I don't think they'll be, they won't think the stop action uh, with, uh, you know, paste, uh, color, uh, colored, you know, crayons and pasty paper are going to think that's a real user interface, but they animate it, then I push this, and then it changes around. But do something and show them to make sure you get it in advance. Now, the more traditional software engineering pitfalls that Agile was invented to try and prevent, which is a thing to do, is that the programmer, the developers, come up with some feature that they think would be cool, right? Oh, man. It's either it's cool because it'd be fun to program, or they think the customer is going to really like this. Uh, but then it gets rejected when the customer, they were wrong, right? The customer didn't really want that. So you are, uh, your, your BDD is all about going to the customer and figuring out what you want to write before you write the code. So what you write sticks around. We want to try and avoid that wasted effort. Uh, so trying to predict what you need or things that you think will be cool, don't, don't do that. Listen to your customer and don't waste your time. Uh, another uh, issue or a pitfall, and these are pitfalls because they're they can easy to happen even though if they're coming, is to think they're done when you've done the happy pass, right? You've got a happy path for each of the features, and so it seems to work and you're done. You really need a, a, a sad path as well as a happy path. From a customer's perspective, it's just as important as the feature you want to add works, but when a user makes a mistake that it doesn't blow up, right? That it will report an error message. You know, uh, studies of humans that we just have an error rate. Uh, you'll hear Armando and I say the wrong word. We know the right word in the lectures, but we, f we just use the wrong word. And humans have an error rate, so the error is human. So you, as part of building an app successfully is to make sure you have both a sad path and a happy path working. On the other hand, don't go overboard on the sad path, right? How many ways can my app go wrong? Can my app go wrong? There's millions of bugs, you know, unlimited number of bugs you could have. So, uh, if you start seeing user stories, then I should not see this, and then I should not see that, and you've got a lot of steps of what you should not see. Uh, you know, the, beware because uh, there's there's an incredible number of them. So you need to have some sad paths, but you can't anticipate all possible bugs. And then the flip side too is you have to be careful on the happy path when you're looking for uh, positive expectations. Like on a movie page, you have to be careful, so then I should see the movie Emma. Well, on, depending on your user interface, that name of a movie might show up many places on the page, and so you could pass even if the feature's not working, it's not where you want. So what do you do about that? Well, Copybara has some, uh, if you see the, restrict, uh, the documentation about Copybara, it has some helpers to help you narrow the focus, the sections of the page where you can look at. So in this example, uh, then I should see Emma within this, uh, this shopping cart area. So these, uh, you know, we hope by going over these pitfalls, you're less likely to fall into the pits. So with that, let's go over another uh, peer instruction. So which statement is false about lo-fi UI and BDD? The purpose of lo-fi UI approach is to debug the UI before you program it. A BDD downside is requiring continuous contact with customers, which may not be possible. 
A BDD downside is that it may lead to poor software architecture since it's focused on behavior. None are false. All three above are true. So take a minute there.